All right, I wanted to do a background just to show you what it normally should be. This is not against the ground. This is just about four feet above the ground. And usually in the burbs of Cleveland, Ohio, USA, it's about 30 CPMs. Today is September 10th, 2017. This video is called My Radioactive Soil. Now, this will look familiar to you, this area here. This is the soil that I had these mutations come up. And this is the mutation right here. I did, you could watch the video. It's a mutant a verbena that's got these uh, conjoined stems. There's uh, two plants that are growing in one and usually it's got the two leaves coming out. Actually here's the regular one that's grown out of it. See how there's two? If you look at this one there's four. And instead of quadrangular four sides to the stem there's eight on this side and you can see it's way better over here this is the best one right here I thought the flower would be conjoined but it doesn't look like it but it still is pretty weird uh, mutation Actually, I got 10 mutations in this spot. I dug them up and put them into pots. But it didn't dawn on me to, to test the soil. And I put the uh, end of the detector right on the ground here. Now this is a 30 second average. It went up to 76 when I first did that, so that's why I wanted to do the video because that's a pretty big number considering I'll take this uh, Geiger counter away it should go around by 30 CPMs which is the uh, average in the burbs of Cleveland Ohio USA here so every day TEPCO keeps pouring that radioactive water into the oceans they're burning that debris still probably after seven years and you know where it ends up in the sky comes down in as black rain goes into the oceans if you look at this the water cycle it starts in the oceans and it ends up in the clouds and then it ends up uh, coming down in rain into the soil that's why they call it the, the water cycle because it, it continues and does that on and on. That's how precipitation is made. Now that's what it usually should be is 30 CPMs. Now I'm going to move this a little bit. Let's try another spot right here.
Well, each time it's uh, there's a count, that's a disintegration. I think that saw bug shouldn't be walking around this soil. So it's definitely picking something up in the soil. It's on the top part of it. And so every time it rains, more and more of it is getting put in. These are microscopic little particles. Got sixty something on that. Now let's do one. Let's do one more. We'll go right over here. Next to this little worm worm house, the worm home. Now I am like on the other side of the earth compared to Japan. Now can you imagine what their soil must be like? Now you definitely need more sophisticated equipment to identify this isotope that it's picking up in order to know what it is or not. Oh boy, that's the highest. 84, it looks like is the highest so far. And this is only three spots. I bet you if I could if I did it in more spots it would probably be higher. Well you get the message that uh This isn't no banana, this isn't a potato chip. And I can't prove it, but this stuff migrates. And it's quite possible that this originated uh, in Japan.
That's why I'm wondering if this stuff in the ground here is what caused these mutations. Because to have 10 mutations in one spot kind of makes you think if that's what's causing it. Just remember, water follows the path of least resistance. So if you're going to try this experiment, where most of the stuff would migrate would be in the lower areas where water accumulates. 